Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to learn about the Enlightenment, which is a cultural movement that grows out of the scientific revolution. Before we get started, I want you to look at these questions to consider and goals for the end of this PowerPoint. By the end of this PowerPoint video, you should be able to answer the question, why is the Enlightenment sometimes called the age of reason? What were the three causes of the Enlightenment? What were common assumptions of Enlightenment thinkers? And in which fields did Enlightenment thinkers begin asking new questions? So the Enlightenment can be considered the dominant cultural movement in Europe from 1680 to 1800, and it is often called the Age of Reason. This was a time when leading thinkers believed that science and reason could be applied to solve any problem, especially when that problem had to do with society, so problems in government, problems in politics, problems in economics. This was a time of new ideas that led to questioning traditional beliefs and questioning traditional institutions. The Enlightenment had a number of causes, but perhaps the most important cause of the Enlightenment was the scientific revolution. Basically, Europeans were super excited about the scientific revolution because they had used reason to solve many of the problems or questions in the natural world. They had figured out how gravity worked. They had figured out how their solar system functioned. They had discovered all sorts of new things both on this world and beyond it using reason and science. So in the Enlightenment, lots of thinkers started to believe that humans could use the same ideas and the same methods from science to discover truths about the human world. They hoped to create a scientific basis for subjects such as government, economics, philosophy, and even art. Basically, they wanted to create a science of society. Another cause of the Enlightenment was the religious warfare that plagued Europe in the 1600s. After the Protestant Reformation, there was a schism in the church which led to different denominations of Christianity. This was the basis of many wars in the 1600s, most notably the Thirty Years' War. Because religion was the basis of these wars, many Europeans began to question the religious views that helped to cause these wars. Finally, increased contact with foreign cultures helped cause the Enlightenment. This increased knowledge of non-European cultures leads Europeans to begin to question their own values and their own traditions. So these are just a few common assumptions and general ideas that were pretty widely accepted by most, although not all, Enlightenment thinkers. The first idea is that human beings are naturally good, that people start out good and they are made evil by the society that they live in. Now, this idea that human beings start out innocent is opposite of the old Christian worldview, which is that people are born in sin. With this new idea, Enlightenment thinkers begin to question, well, if people are born good, why are there so many problems in the world? So the Enlightenment thinkers' answer to this question was that social problems were the causes of most evils. So societies were messed up, and it was these social problems, these problems with economics, these problems with government and education, that lead to things like war and poverty and crime. And they believed that if we fix these things, then we could eliminate war and poverty and all of this other terrible stuff. Now, this was the age of reason, so Enlightenment thinkers believed that we could fix society by applying reason in order to solve social problems, so that if we could advance government and economics and education by applying reason and science to them, then we could fix human society, and we could get rid of all of this terrible stuff that characterizes it. Now, this idea of progress this idea that reason could make life better and better and better was central to the Age of the Enlightenment. These ideas that we've talked about lead Enlightenment thinkers to the conclusion that in order for society to progress, old beliefs and institutions, things like absolute monarchies and the Catholic Church, would have to change or be abandoned. Now, obviously, priests and monarchs across Europe were very uncomfortable with this Enlightenment idea because it threatened their absolute power. 
Now you'll notice in this slide there are two paintings. The painting on the left is an Enlightenment representation of a Native American, and the painting on the right is a depiction of the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette. These two paintings show a big idea in the Enlightenment, which was the idea of the noble savage. This idea of the noble savage is the belief that people from non-European cultures were closer to nature and therefore more noble and purer than people from Europe who had begun to move away from nature and therefore had become sort of artificial and shallow. This was a big idea that influenced how Europeans thought about the non-European world. In their quest to discover the laws that govern humankind, Enlightenment thinkers began to ask a lot of questions about things in society like government, economics, religion, philosophy, and art. For the fields of government, Enlightenment thinkers asked things like, how much power should a government have? And what rights should be given to the individual? How can we make sure that the government uses its power rationally? And we'll see that a lot of the ideas that currently exist in the United States are derived from Enlightenment thinkers and Enlightenment ideas. In economics, thinkers were beginning to ask things like, how can business, trade, and agriculture best be managed in order to increase a nation's wealth and to best meet the needs of the people? For religion, they were beginning to ask, how do we know that God exists? And perhaps even more interestingly, if we can explain the way the universe works without the idea of God, then why do we need to believe in God in the first place? In the fields of philosophy, a lot of Enlightenment thinkers were asking, can we know anything at all? And interestingly, a lot of Enlightenment thinkers said, no, no, we really can't. Um, other philosophers were considering, how can we tell what, right from wrong? So instead of using traditional notions to tell us what is right and wrong, Enlightenment philosophers want to use themselves to discover what makes something right or wrong using reason. Enlightenment thinkers were even reconsidering art. They were trying to discover if there was a science to beauty, if there was some sort of mathematical or rational basis that made a perfect form and perfect beauty. Basically, in all of these different fields, Enlightenment thinkers were attempting to apply reason and scientific thought to fix old problems that they had inherited from previous ages, and in economics, religion, philosophy, and art.